The number five was a big deal yeah. on this evening because if you add up the games between the NBA and the NHL playoffs, you had four game fives. People trying to get eliminated, others trying to get a lead in the series. Yeah. Oh. Miami trying not to get eliminated, but the odds were not in their favor. Not when they're playing their 37th different starting lineup of the season. That seems like a lot, Zubin. Not when you don't have Jimmy Butler or Jaime Jaquez or you haven't had Terry Rozier. And the Celtics, minus Porzingis, are pretty darn healthy. Also 28-0 in a series all-time when leading 3-1, which was the predicament tonight. Derek White coming off the 38-point explosion. Jalen Brown to the cup. Check out the consecutive made baskets. This game was basically over after the first 12 minutes. White to the rack. That's three consecutive baskets. I mentioned no Porzingis. He's actually got the same injury that Giannis does, calf injury. So Horford's there in his place. He scores from downtown. White had five threes, 15 first quarter points. Sam Hauser had 17 off the bench. That's 10 shots in a row. The Celtics were just on fire. And as I mentioned, Miami just didn't have any firepower. Brown and Tatum were just terrific. Tatum had a quiet night by his standards. He only had 16, but they didn't need him. They had 17 off the bench, like I said. From Hauser, Jason Tatum and Brown were great, combining for 15 of the 27 second quarter points. They're up by 22 at the half. The only question was, was this going to be the greatest margin of victory in any Celtics playoff game? Wouldn't quite get there. They won one by 40 against the Sixers in the 80s. This was close to that. Derek White 13 three-pointers in his last two games. He's been such a great energy guy for him. No doubt about it. Celtics roll 118-84. They'll get either Orlando or Cleveland. They'll resume their series Friday. Celtics rolling on Wednesday. Uh, I don't really worry about what happened last year. At the end of the day, I like how we approached the series regardless of who we were playing. Uh, had an intentionality to it. Had attention to detail and had a consistent physicality. And uh, that's the most important thing uh, is having that regardless of who you're playing against. And wake up tomorrow, you got to do it all over again uh, versus another team. So it doesn't really matter that uh, what happened then. We just had such like great battles against them. And um, I think in the past that like we've had opportunities to, to close them out, especially on the home court and um, have failed. And so uh, being able to, to close them out here tonight and and do it the way we did it is definitely big. We talked about we wanted to throw the first punch, and I think we did that pretty much for the whole series. And so, and so uh, just just being aggressive early, um, and then just having that pace and everything that we talked about the whole season, and we were able to do a good job with that. The seventh all-time playoff matchup between Miami and Boston goes to the Celtics. In fact, they've been in the playoffs four times in the last five years. It's a 2-2 split with the most recent round going tonight to the Seas. On the other side, Mike said it during the game. We were watching late fourth, down 34. Spo still getting on his guys, still coaching, and no excuses, even if they were shorthanded. We're not going to put this on the fact that you know, we've had some injuries. Uh, Let's not take anything away from Boston. They were, they've been the best team uh, in basketball all season long. And uh, in this series, in four of the games, um, you know, they played as, as such. Uh, that had nothing to do with the injuries, uh, had nothing to do with guys uh, that are available or not available. They played very good basketball. Um, and they probably had something. <laughs> to motivate them even more against us. But the, they, they played at a high level, and you could sense that they wanted this to end right now, you know, tonight, and, and not let this thing get uh, get back to Miami. That's a, that's a sign of a, a mature team. We've learned a lot of lessons through this, through this playoff series. You know, obviously, including myself, but, like, the younger guys actually feel what it's like to be in a playoff series, understand how locked in you have to be you know, going out there and actually executing your plan. Uh, so, you know, we learned a lot, of, a lot of lessons through this. Uh, Kendrick Perkins joins us now. Uh, we just heard Eric Sposer Perk talk about the Celtics look like they were ready to get this over with. And all due respect to the Heat, that's because they have much bigger fish to fry here, right? They're trying to pursue a championship. But the thing that's questioning this team right now is the health of Chris Stapps Porzingis. Got that calf strain, going to be out several games, maybe not even play the next round. With, without Porzingis, KP, what is the potential of the Celtics? Without Christoph Porzingis, first of all, E's, if the Celtics fans think that I'm about to come on here and say, way to go, 
Great job. Hell yeah, y'all done it. I'm not. I mean, they were supposed to beat this team. Matter of fact, they were supposed to sweep this team. Now, I've been questioning whether or not Christoph Przingis could hold up for four seven-game series. He is the most important player on the Celtics team. This Celtic team is championship or bust. Without Christoph Przingis, yes, they can make it to the conference finals. Yes, they have enough talent in Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, Derek White, Drew Holiday, and old Al Horford to make it to the <laughs> finals. But can they complete the mission without Christoph Przingis and that's been bringing home Banner 18? And the answer is hell no, <laughs> especially when you look at the matchups in the, in the Western Conference. They could possibly play Denver, and we know that you need size to go against Jokic, the best player in the league. They could possibly play the Minnesota Timberwolves. You know that you're going to need size going against it's Carl Anthony Towns and Rudy Gobert. And then when you think about just the Eastern Conference, we don't know what's about to happen in that uh, Pacers series we, and Bucks. We don't know if Giannis and Dame is about to come back. Hell, we see how the Knicks are balling right now. They're in a dog fight right now with the Philadelphia 76ers. And even next round, right, size is going to matter. Whether they're playing against the Cleveland Cavaliers or the Orlando Magic, now I still have the Celtics' favor to win, but it's not going to be a shoot-around type series like it was against the Miami Heat this first round. So Tatum and Brown, the Celtics' two best players, but maybe their most important player as it relates to their championship aspirations, is Chris Stapps Porzingis, and more specifically, that calf strain. Perk, I want to get your take on something else, right? Because, I mean, you know as well as anybody how physical the playoffs can get in the NBA once you get to the postseason. And we've already seen some issues with the Knicks and the Sixers, you pointed out. I mean... Embiid with the rake across Jalen Brunson's face gets a flagrant foul there. But, but I wonder from your perspective, Perk, if this play was worse or if we go back about 10 years, there was a series between the Thunder and the Grizzlies and you basically <laughs> turned Mike Miller into a picnic bench and you were eating some, some potato salad. Like, I don't understand the posture you. that you put on this grown man in the middle of it, like, oh, you fell on him, but I, it's this. Well, look at it. You put both legs up, dog. Like, what you doing? I, what was hey, you doing, hey, Perk? Eve, That's a grown man. Eve. He got a family. I know, but Eves, they call me one of the best screen setters in the league for a reason. And in the playoffs, you got to do whatever it takes in order to get a win. Damn it, look at Tabo Cephalos. He had a wide open look, did he? Did, what did they call the illegal pick? No, they didn't. I mean, you know, that was just a smart veteran move at the time. Perk, you sat on that man. Yeah, I mean, you know, things happen, Eve. Things <laughs> happen. It was a good pick in my eyes. <laughs> hey, you know what? The pick was so good, you should have gotten an assist on it. But uh, yeah. Thabo missed the shot, so it didn't matter anyway. But uh, nice little throwback here. Back when that, oh, that look, that's skinny Perk. That's skinny yeah. Perk back in the day yeah. now. Yeah. That's motivation right there. I don't know why y'all bringing up that old stuff, but I'm going to have to get back in the gym. Hey, Perk, as always, brother, we appreciate it, man.